this is definitely going to be a forward launch and it's going to be cross as well be nice if there was a bit more wind paramotors and aeroplanes are quite different aircraft but what are the key differences between them i have experience flying both uh, from the perspective of a hobby pilot i fly for fun not for competition or for profit and what a load of fun it can be i'll discuss what you can do with the two different kinds of aircraft how much fun they are compared to each other what they are like to fly I'll also talk about the cost differences between the two types of flying and the other practical issues like airworthiness, reliability, airspace restrictions, the training requirements and your ability to store the two different kinds of aircraft. I started fixed wing flying from a very early age. My dad was a keen pilot and I got most of my experience when I was in my teens and early 20s. I've only got photos uh, from my fixed wing flying, so I've had to poach a bit of video off YouTube and referenced it. So what can you do with the two aircraft? Well, good analogy, a aeroplane is like a flying car and a paramotor is like a quad bike. You have a fairly restricted view out of the aircraft, but it is still good for sightseeing. And because you've got a good range and good penetration, you can go sightseeing almost anywhere in the country. In contrast, a paramotor has a very limited range. So if you want to go look at something, you need to take off relatively close to it. That being said, the paramotor is an ideal aircraft for sightseeing. Its low speed and totally unobstructed view makes for the most perfect panorama visions. It is much nicer than viewing something out of an aeroplane. Probably the most fun thing you can do in any aircraft is aerobatics. This is Ross Brody, 16 year old, uh, demonstrating some aerobatics in a Victor Air Tourer. And I did pretty much exactly the same thing at the same age in the same aircraft. Only some aeroplanes are capable of aerobatic maneuvers. Most of them are not. And you need proper skills and training. But learning to do aerobatics in an aeroplane isn't particularly hard. And it's a load of fun. Paramotors are also capable of aerobatics, and I believe all paramotors are capable of doing aerobatics. So you don't need a specialized aircraft. There are also more aerobatic maneuvers you can do in a paramotor. They call it acro in the paramotoring world. Paramotor acro is much more difficult than doing aerobatics in an aeroplane because of the nature of the wing, the pendulum swing, uh, the fact that it's a soft wing and you're under lines, you have to be positive loaded all the way through, you build up energy. It's a very complicated process, much harder than flying an aeroplane. I'm not game to go over my wing yet, still building up my skills. So aeroplanes, to do aerobatics, you need a specialised aeroplane, but they're relatively easy to do. Paramotor, almost anyone will do it, but it requires a lot more training practice and it's much more difficult to do. Low flying is another very fun activity you can do in the air. Aeroplanes can do it, but it's quite dangerous. They're very fast and they need a suitable surface to land on if they have any kind of an issue. By contrast, paramotors are very well suited to low flying. You just need a paddock, permission to do it, and suitable weather. With enough skill, you can even foot drag a paramotor. The average aeroplane pilot will never do something even close to this. So when you're out having fun flying around, it's really cool to be able to share the experience with passengers. Aeroplanes really lend themselves to taking passengers. They're built for it. They're like flying cars, really. And uh, the regulations and the training you receive also lends itself towards carrying passengers. Paramotors are also capable of carrying passengers, but it's a very awkward affair. And considering to be able to take off, you have to be able to run, and you have to be able to run on landing, and you have two people attached together, it makes for a very awkward arrangement. To me, maybe not so suitable. Uh, the last application of the two aircraft I'll talk about here is traveling around the place. I've flown pretty much all over Australia in aeroplanes. The only real restriction is you're limited to taking off and landing at airports and airstrips. I particularly enjoyed flying out to islands that were difficult to get to any other way. I think it would be next to impossible to do the same thing on a paramotor. Realistically, any long distance flight on a paramotor, you'd need a support vehicle to come along and resupply you at every short stop. To me, paramotor is a machine that you put in your car or in your boat and you take it to a location and then you fly there. The one advantage paramotors have when it comes to traveling around the place 
is a paramotor has much less restrictions on where it takes off and lands. You can take off from beaches, you can take off from paddocks. You need very little room to perform a launch or a landing. They are extremely versatile in that respect. So what is it like flying an aeroplane and what is it like flying a paramotor? Well, to me, both are a hell of a lot of fun. The feeling is entirely different. An aeroplane, again, is a bit like being in a car. You're in an enclosed vehicle. You've got a massive, powerful engine in front of you and a very solid airframe. It feels controlled and relatively safe. While on the paramotor, you're hanging under what is basically an inflatable bag by a bunch of lines strapped into a backpack with a small two-stroke motor on it. You feel extremely exposed. There is nothing in front of you. You can't see any of your equipment while you're flying along. It is a really, I can only describe it as a terrifying feeling, but it feels like you are flying like Superman. You run into the sky and then you can control the vehicle with your body weight. While the aeroplane feels like a powerful machine that you drive, it confidently punches through the air, going where you want it to go. You need to respect the sky, but usually you're in control. But on the paramotor, the sky is completely in control of you. You feel every tiny bump and ripple in the air, and you get thrown around like a leaf in the breeze. They are fair weather flying machines and are not particularly airworthy. Turbulence that would be an annoying bump in an aeroplane could kick you straight out of the sky on a paramotor. And here is probably the biggest difference between flying aeroplanes and flying paramotors. To fly these machines safely, you need to be very, very, very aware of the air, of the weather, of the patterns, of the thermals, of everything going on. When I switched from aeroplanes to flying aircraft like this, massively expanding my understanding of the weather was the biggest change I had to make in my thinking. Aeroplanes are vastly superior to paramotors in this regard. Aeroplanes can fly most of the time. Paramotors are extremely restricted to when they can fly. They are extremely constrained by the weather. Paramotors and aeroplanes are also fundamentally indifferent in how they are controlled. Aeroplanes have a control column. You turn it left to bank left, right to bank right, and you correct the aileron drag with the rudder pedals. The airplane's angle of bank then puts it into a turn. Pitch is controlled by the forward and back movement of the control column. You pull it back to pitch up, push it forward to pitch down. The various throttle controls control the thrust of the aircraft and thrust determines speed. Paramotors are suspended under paraglider wings and paraglider wings have multiple control inputs. The main control inputs are the brake lines, which run from the back of the wing to the hands, and weight shift which is using your body weight as a control input. The glider can be controlled with brakes or weight shift, but is best controlled with both. Pulling left brake will turn the wing to the left, and conversely pulling right brake will turn the wing to the right. But brakes are more complicated than the ailerons on an aeroplane. They are also used to change the shape of the wing, similar to the flaps on an aeroplane's wing. They can be used to control sink rate, glide ratio, and the flare. And just to top it off, they are also used to control the wing's position above the head. The glider will also turn in the direction of a weight shift. And swinging body weight creates a pendulum effect, a swinging motion which is essential for acro, aerobatic manoeuvres. A simple throttle control held in the hand controls thrust, which many people might be surprised to hear has no effect on speed. Thrust determines rate of climb, not speed. Paramotors are stabilised by your body weight hanging under the wing, which makes them very simple and easy to fly straight and level. Whereas an aeroplane is more difficult, it requires constant pilot input to remain straight and level. Yet an aeroplane is simpler and easier to control than a paramotor. So doing maneuvers is simpler and easier in an aeroplane than it is in a paramotor. And because paramotors do not have a tail, the wing has to be manually stabilized in turbulent air. So that's it for part one. In part two, I'll discuss airspace restrictions, reliability, get into a bit of detail about the cost differences between flying paramotors and aeroplanes, probably one of the most important things, and I'll discuss the training.